Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining the April VideoCoin webinar. We're here with Halsey Miner. For those of you who don't know who Halsey Miner is, he's a strategic technology partner and investor in the VideoCoin network. And Halsey Miner is also the CEO of LivePlanet. Uh, today on this webinar, we'll be discussing the updates to the VideoCoin business model, what these means for what this means for contributors, and we'll wrap it up with by addressing questions directly from the chat. Halsey, if you're ready, uh, I'll dive right into it. Um, for those Great. getting familiar, yep, you ready? Um, for those get yep. uh, for those getting familiar with VideoCoin, uh, please give us a rundown of what the VideoCoin network is and what problem is it solving. Yeah, so it's actually an incredibly exciting time for us and what we do. Um, just just by background, the the video streaming business is emerging as one of the largest businesses in the world. And it is completely realigning the media industry. And I don't know whether people follow this or not, but um, Fox was bought by Disney and AT&T bought Time Warner, principally for the purpose of building streaming services. And so you've got, um, You've got literally a realignment of the biggest technology companies in the year all around product development for streaming services. And Disney has um, Disney has promised that they will create a streaming service that has 100 million users. And, and Time Warner is 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 making uh, similar suggestions. The the Internet is already 80 percent video. It's growing at 25 percent uh, annual uh, compound annual, which makes the internet basically the uh, the video net. All of these companies uh, need a service provider to do three principal things: encoding, which is really compression, uh, storage, and 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 streaming. And these services are today uh, provided by. Several large monopolies, with really AWS being the being the the largest of of all, but Google and and, and a couple of others um, in there. And the the problem that this creates is the is that Amazon Web Services, which is the the business that uh, includes this video encoding, storage, and distribution business, is the most profitable business Amazon has. In fact, it's the only business that a profitable business that Amazon has, and they use their profits to compete in media and retail. So you've got some of the largest media companies in the world who are having to pay uh, Amazon or Google. Um, they are making money off of them, and they're using that money then to directly compete with their uh, with their streaming services. So you've got this titanic shift that's happening from what's been for 50 years broadcast or satellite delivery where the incremental user doesn't cost the media company any additional money to where now you've got uh, the, the majority of the audience quickly becoming um, streaming one-to-one -one over the internet and those costs are significant, and, and as I said, the profit is being uh, principally uh, going to Amazon, um, but as I said, Google and and some other uh, participants. This business is insanely competitive now because everybody is getting in the streaming uh, business, and you've got two principal costs. You've got the cost of the service provider, which Amazon does. And then you've got the cost of producing content. The more money you spend on distribution, encoding, storage, and stream, streaming, the less money you can spend on, on, um, uh, on content. So Amazon, of course, has the, the advantage really in two ways. One, their costs are the lowest of anybody because they're a service provider uh, and they're making margin on top of all of these other companies. So there is an extraordinary opportunity in this world of explosive growth around 
the online uh, video industry to take a different approach, which reduces cost and allows some of the biggest media companies in the world, if not all of them, to be able to reallocate money that's today um, profit from for Amazon or just uh, uh, the cost of a service, um, which is significant, and use that money to purchase content, which is really in the end the only thing that actually uh, uh, that actually matters. What we do is we like Airbnb and Uber, we take advantage of underutilized resources. What is interesting about um, the, the world in which uh, we have it is that there's between 20 and 30% of global data centers, of computers in global data centers are called zombies. It's about 20 to $30 billion in, uh, uh, in value that's basically sitting idle every day. And every one of those service, servers can become a video coin miner. Um, the video coin miner does the encoding, the storage, and, and the streaming. Our miners, unlike um, uh, crypto miners, don't require uh, special hardware. So the data centers that are sitting there idle can, can very easily, with by, by loading software, they can end up uh, generating uh, revenue instead of lying fallow. And it creates an enormous opportunity for us to help these companies who are locked in one of the world's most competitive battles to reduce their cost uh, and be able to reallocate money to the things that matter most to them, which is really the, um, the production of, of content. And, you know, just in the last six months, there's just been a titanic shift in the world as people realize that um, the existing modes of distribution through cable and, uh, and satellite are, are dying very quickly. And as I said, it's, it's, it has led to some of the largest acquisitions ever in the history of media, principally focused around creating streaming services. So it's an enormous industry. It has uh, a couple of monopoly players and those players are not only making money off of all media companies, they're competing with them. And that creates a very fertile ground for somebody to come in and with a new model that has lower costs. Uh, ultimately, I, I also believe more innovation um, at a time period when uh, competition is going to be incredibly cutthroat and every dollar saved um, is a dollar that can be spent on what consumers want most, which is which is content. Great. Yeah, that's a great explanation on, on the video coin network and the problem we're solving. Uh, one of the key things we're doing today is explaining some of the uh, What's, what's changing with the video coin network. So last month, video coin announced three key enhancements to the video coin model. Uh, it, one being the removal of payment vo uh, variability um, for consumers, the elimination of token uh, inflation and the use of video uh, vid as token as uh, for optimizing network efficiency. Uh, could you please explain these enhancements and how they are beneficial to the video coin e uh, ecosystem? Yeah, I, I want everyone to really understand these these um, uh, well because they are they are in very important innovations, and I think they're ones that are going to be adopted uh, to the to the to the if other projects can. Um, they are absolutely fundamental innovations to to making crypto and crypto based businesses um, work. You, I've always throughout my career, I've always tested assumptions, the assumption, my assumptions, the assumptions of the business, the assumptions of the industry. And this is a classic uh, case of looking at things and, and certain assumptions that people have made and, and coming up with a fresh perspective that I think is going to make a significant um, is going to make a significant 
difference in the success of, of our project. And I, and I, I truly believe that, that uh, a number of these, if not all of them, will ultimately be adopted by um, other successful crypto projects. So there are really are three of them. The first is token inflation. We spent a bunch of time thinking about this and everybody since Bitcoin, as we all know, has token inflation built in. Most of the models, if not all the models for, for crypto and crypto based businesses incorporate the incorporate inflation into the model. And we looked at it and we looked at it deeply and we couldn't come up with any reason why inflation was necessary. And we certainly couldn't come up with any reason how it would be beneficial. So what's, what's clear, what's a clear negative is that you effectively dilute the value of the, of the network. You certainly dilute the value of uh, the participants and those who are performing, performing services like, for instance, staking, which are really important to us. And that I'll come back to that on, on point three. So, so it kind of feels like everybody just sort of accepted inflation because it's been done, but it has a really a bunch of really negative effects on a project. And, you know, the most obvious really is that the value of the, whatever you're providing gets diluted over time. And, and, and even if your project is working, you have to build value faster than you're diluting your, your tokens. So we, we realized that we could run our network and, and do some actually very interesting things and never increase the number of, of, of tokens. So there's no ongoing token generation. I think this is in, it, I think this is an incredible benefit um, for our token holders. And I think as people start really looking at this, they think they're going to come to the same conclusion that we have, which is, a lot of people, I think, are doing token inflation just because that's the way it's been. But I think when you look at it, it's very hard to say why it should be part of a project. Because from our point of view, it doesn't really add anything. And it certainly does detract from the, the overall uh, value of those who are uh, staking, staking in our network. That's, that's the first thing. And I think that's just really kind of looking at what everybody has done and asking whether it was ne necessary and, and, and coming to the conclusion that it's not. The second is, is, is very interesting. So one of the things that we have looked at is using the token as a payment mechanism. And, you know, one of the problems that Bitcoin has had with adoption has obviously been um, as, as money, it's, uh, you know, for consumer money has been its volatility. It was really clear when we started talking to potential customers, uh, media companies, people who own data centers, that they, there were a lot of problems with using our token as a payment mechanism. mechanism. Um, they would have to go onto an exchange and they would have to buy it. Uh, when they bought it, if they were if they were a hundred thousand dollar or a million dollar a month customer from us, they would drive the price up, so they'd have to have a trading operation to to do it. When they put the value on um, in the account to be used during the month, that 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 amount of value would constantly be changing. Um, businesses have to budget, and so if they can't understand the value of uh, of they, they, they can't understand what their costs are going to be. Um, they, they principally can't do business with you. And so we sort of a thought experiment would be if Amazon offered a service where you put your money in and you could either get 30% uh, more value or 30% less value as, as, as a product. So in other words, you could, you could, Put it in fiat, or you could you could do this this effective gambling mechanism. That we really didn't feel that anybody would actually take them up on that deal. On the other side, you've got the data centers, and they are trying to they they are in a in a competition to provide service at the lowest cost. It was very difficult for them to do that if 
they're receiving the video coin token for paying because that token is is moving around. So if you're if you're going to take on um, if you're going to take on Amazon, you cannot create a whole bunch of friction uh, that that Amazon or Google do not have. And I I don't think it's I think I think any project that gets closer to having real customers is going to recognize that using crypto as a payment mechanism, particularly if those customers are going to spend large amounts of, of, of money, um, you're introducing an extraordinary amount of friction in the system. And it's, it's very hard to find anybody who, as a potential customer for us, and, and I, like I said, I think ultimately uh, any crypto project, which is you know, getting closer to, to having real customers and operating, that they're, they're going to find that at, at least at a minimum, they have to offer a fiat-based payment mechanism. And so we spend a whole bunch of time looking at how uh, we could change the way uh, our system operated to reduce this payment friction because, you know, obviously we're competing with Amazon and, and, and Google and they don't have those, those problems. So this is a huge innovation. And I, I truly feel that projects that are particularly the closer they get to having legitimate uh, to having legitimate customers, they're going to recognize that they're introducing a, a lot of friction. Now, I think I understand why people didn't pay attention to that before, and it was because crypto was going up. And so as long as crypto was going up, it made sense for people to buy crypto and use it as money because they would also be making money. So you're, you're, you're paying for a service, but you're also making money. As we've seen, and I've been in this industry since 2012 when I started to uphold, volatility is a big part of, of the industry and it's a big part of, of virtually every, uh, every currency. That volatility has stood, stood in the way of consumer adoption and when it comes to businesses, they really cannot uh, gamble on, uh, on services like ours. So I think this is, you know, takes away a huge amount of, of friction uh, inside of, of our service. The, the third part is what is the, the role of the token and does your, your token actually play an important role in the operation of the network? And so, you know, since uh, it's in our, in our white paper, we have always seen our, our token um, as operating the, the staking mechanism uh, for our network. And the goal for the token is is straightforward, but it's a very clever mechanism that um, a lot, or it takes the, the better workers, that's what we call data centers. It takes the better workers who are cheaper and moves them uh, to the top. And it also secures the, the network against spam and, and, and other uh, bad uh, behavior. It's, it's, it's a great, from, from the standpoint of, of a token holder, um, they end up getting compensated for, for providing this service. Again, the service is designed to take the better data centers with the lower cost and move them to, to the top. And so the token holders get compensated in fiat and additional uh, tokens. The, the tokens are not through inflation. So so a lot of projects, a lot of projects, the way that they're compensating the token holders is through inflation. So the system runs, you have a token, you're staking, you get more tokens. And that, that isn't actually money. That's just dilution. Um, and, you know, we started to saw that everywhere. And we're like, you know, if we're, if we're just giving people more tokens, then they're, they're really not getting value. And so, and so the, the system that we have and, and the staking mechanism, the, the, the better data center, the, the data centers have to offer a percentage of revenue uh, to attract tokens. 
And what ends up happening is, is that, the, that those that are staking uh, in our network uh, generate fiat. So, so they actually get paid in starting with, with, with dollars for their, for their participation. Um, and they get tokens. And those tokens come from some of the money is used to go back into the market and buy, uh, and buy uh, actual video coin tokens. And then um, it's a small amount, but um, but they get paid in in tokens, so that the overall uh, amount of tokens, video coin tokens, stake uh, goes up for those who are who are who are winning. the The advantage is that is that the participation of the token holders is out of uh, out of revenues, not profit. So as the revenues grow in the service, those who are who are staking. Uh, inside of our network um, are getting paid um, a percentage off the top. And that's determined really by what's being offered in the market by, by the various different um, data centers. So, so, so we have a use that is incredibly important to the overall operation of the network. And the token plays a legitimate role in how that works and gets compensated as such. So instead of operating as money on our network, which would just simply in introduce friction, or instead of just getting paid um, in more tokens, which is nothing more than uh, inflation, uh, our token holders get paid in fiat and additional tokens, but those tokens come out of the exchange, which always creates, uh, as we get bigger, it creates more and more demand uh, on, the, uh, on the exchange. And so it's really, you know, it's a very, it's a, it's a great model because we, we really use our token holders to play an incredibly important role in the operation of, of the network, and those token holders get compensated uh, for, uh, for, um, you know, for driving this, uh, this important staking uh, process. So it's the, the. Um, Elimination of inflation, which we couldn't find any reason why uh, anybody in the ecosystem that is video coin would want that. What benefits it bring, we, we couldn't find. So we've reduced inflation, so there'll be no additional tokens created. We have taken a huge amount of friction out of the system, which I think anybody who, who you know starts engaging with customers is going to find they're going to want to pay uh, in fiat, we've you know created a mechanism for that uh, to, to be able to work. Um, that involves hundreds of, of 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 banks that participate in a tokenized um, in a, a tokenized fiat payment system. And then we have a staking mechanism, which was very similar to what we uh, the, what we had in our our white paper, um, and it uses the uh, community of token holders to help us take the uh, help the network to find and use uh, those data centers who are uh, who are the uh, most reliable uh, and lowest cost and have them rise to the top. So, so these three things I think are incredibly important to our success. But I honestly think people are going to. Uh, once they see what we're doing, I think there there will be um, adoption among other projects. Um, in many ways, I hope there's adoption among other projects, uh, particularly around um, you know use, introducing fiat as a way of, of reducing um, uh, reducing friction uh, in the in the payments business. So so we compete with Amazon. What what we want our customers to come to us for is for something that's more innovative and is and is lower cost because we we use data centers that are underutilized and we don't want to try to get them to buy a token we just want to compete with them straight up their bank account connecting to our infrastructure uh, our data centers are getting paid in fiat there's there's no there's no there's no need for them to have a trading operation um, and i think these three changes are you know are 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 really significant additions 
to the way the crypto uh, industry functions. And we spent a lot of time thinking about all of these things and researching them and from talking to lawyers to watching, looking at, you know, many, many projects. And these were the, the things that we um, believed were absolutely essential to the su success of certainly our project. And we believe in time, probably other projects as well. Great, great. Uh, we are getting questions in from the chat. Um, for those of you who, uh, of you who are attending, we'll be addressing those questions at the end of this conversation, uh, at the end of this webinar. Um, thank you for your questions and keep sending them in. Um, Halsey, next question. Uh, what was the thought process for adding these enhancements to the video coin model? Well, I mean, I, I don't think I need to tell anybody that, you know, it's been, it's been a long, you know, 12 to 18 months and, you know, our, we are, um, you know, we're, we're, our, our, our goal is success. I mean, that's, we, I, I we, you know, it, it, we're not, um, um, you know, we will take whatever path that we think is, is necessary. Um, even if it's different from, from the rest of the, the industry in order to, to be successful. And we, you know, I personally, um, have, you know, spent a career always checking my own assumptions and the assumptions of, of others. And so these three enhancements, I think, are, are they just they're essential. They were absolutely essential for our project um, that validated by um, the, those um, who will be our customers and by the data centers that um, uh, that will participate. So this this wasn't done in a vacuum. This was done uh, with, you know, working with those people who are going to be, provide the foundation um, and the customer base for for the project. Great. We have had some questions from the community. Um, does this new model eliminate the demand for video coin token? No, I mean, what it actually does is it actually, it actually makes, I, I, I think it makes our token uniquely valuable. Um, you know, instead of paying people in, in more uh, tokens, uh, as so many projects do, our token holders actually get paid um, fiat uh, and and some video coin tokens that come from the uh, the actual uh, marketplace. the the um, The payment of of tokens to those data centers and stakers who who win business because they are being paid in uh, in part in tokens. And because we're not doing any inflation, it means that as we grow, we will always be coming back to the market to buy video coins to pay out. So let, let's, uh, you know, let, 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 let's assume it's, uh, it's um, you know, 90-10. So 90% so of, the, of the value would be paid uh, in fiat and 10% of the value would be paid uh, in video coin. And that 10% that of video coin is not through inflation, it's through uh, it's through automated uh, market-based mechanisms where money, actual fiat is yeah, used is used to to Los buy Angeles, is used to buy uh, tokens on the exchange, and then and then those tokens are, are given to those stakers who who win. So, um, and in addition to that, the the way the system works is that the actual revenue that they receive in both tokens and, and payment is is based on the the, uh, based on our revenues uh, as we grow, uh, not on not on profit, and, and as I said, not not by just creating uh, more more tokens. So I I mean I I think I, I don't know every project, but I think the the utility of our tokens um, and the rewards that they get for participating um, are extremely attractive in the operation, and you know it is they they are absolutely. Uh, serve the purpose of a of a u utility. Um, you know, we've 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 we validated that, and so we feel really confident that we have come up with a with a role for the token holders 
that plays an important part in the functioning of our network. And I said, many of this goes back to our original white paper. Uh, and those who stake uh, get, uh, get compensated for performing this important function uh, on our network. Great. Halsey, what do, you, uh, what do these enhancements mean to contributors? Um, well, I think what they mean to mean contributors is a far greater chance that we will actually be successful because we have kind of taken on head on some of the problems that we think are are really endemic in, in the industry at large. Um, you know, these are very different from what others are doing. And um, but we have I mean, the reality is we have a huge market. I mean, we have an insanely large market. I mean, the video streaming business, as I said in the beginning, I mean, you know, there are 60, 80 billion dollar um, acquisitions that are happening now, all because of the video streaming business. I mean, even if e even if we took no market share from Amazon, we just participated in the 25 percent content annual growth. We could be, you know, an extraordinarily large um, company. We have a group of people internally who have a long track record of being successful. Our CTO has actually is one of the few people who's actually built a video streaming cloud. He built Intel's video streaming cloud that was a competitor to AWS. Intel, for, for strategic reasons, decided that they didn't want to compete with their customers. And so they sold it to Facebook. And that was really the advent of a video on Facebook. So we've got an extraordinary team. We've got a, a, a market that gets more interesting all the time. I mean, you know, just the acquisitions that have happened, you know, in the last six months, primarily because of video streaming. So, you know, we're not looking at, it's not, it's not going to be long for 90% of the internet is, is video. And so, I mean, that's, that's, that's a massive industry. So, so we truly believe that the same model that worked with Airbnb and Uber and other sharing services can work in, in our domain. And in some ways, it's almost easier because, you know, with Uber, you got to have somebody coming into your car and in, and in Airbnb, you have to have a human in your house. And here we're really just talking about allocating servers in a, in a, in a data center with none of the human None of the human factors, and then, then when you start paying them in fiat instead of a token, you know, a volatile token, you know, it all becomes it all becomes much much uh, much simpler. So I mean, even since the the time that you know we uh, first started in engaging the community, the world has has changed for the better for us, and I truly believe that by using decentralization, which allows us to, to be able to use uh, data centers all around the world um, that, are, that are not running at capacity. It's gonna allow us to deliver a set of services that are significantly less expensive, do not require uh, our customers to compete with Amazon uh, by giving them more money. Um, and we will help in this hyper competitive business the media companies to be able to hold on to more money that would normally go into into streaming and, and Amazon's pocket and instead invest in content, which is which is absolutely necessary to uh, to be successful. I mean, it's it's just an extraordinary moment in in video right now. So, you know, it's not it's not just that like video is growing. It's like this is there's, there's, there's like a major global change in consumer behavior that's happening right now. And we are uh, in a position to be an enabler of, of, of all of these companies um, and, and, and provide legitimately lower cost service that has, has, uh, has um, uh, uh, equal reliability. The other thing is, is it, it's kind of hard to, it, it's kind of hard to, uh, to, to make people understand this, but, but I, I think in three or four years, people won't be talking about us just by lower costs. They'll be talking about the fact that we have significantly greater innovation. There's not a lot of innovation going on today. Well, not, there's been, hadn't been a lot of innovation going on in video, period. Um, but, but, and, you know, services like, um, um, well, when, when you look at, when you look at 
Amazon Web Services, you don't see a whole lot of uh, companies building innovative applications on top of a proprietary uh, video, proprietary video infrastructure. Same can be said for uh, Google. If, if, if Google, if there's any innovation on Google's infrastructure, it's Google doing it. So by, by having effectively an open source community and a community of developers, I, I think we're going to see a new era in video innovation start to happen. And there are other benefits as well as we start getting into the world of 5G, where you've got uh, applications and services are getting pushed closer uh, to, to the, end, the end user. Our decentralized method is much, much better than, uh, than Amazon centralized. And if anybody looks into 5G, you'll see it does two things. One, it dramatically increases bandwidth, which makes more, uh, in, increases the consumption of, of video. Um, but it also is a world of lower latency. Those are the two pri primary benefits. And by being cent centralized, you can't actually take advantage of the lower latency because we are decentralized. Uh, we can we can put we can push content towards the edge um, and, and edge based services. So even the world of 5G is really beneficial for our our model and our computer architecture. Great. It's actually an excellent segue into uh, yeah. video coins, recent explainer video, which covers the network today and the key enhancements that have been made. So I'm going to go ahead and share that. Welcome to the video coin network the next generation of cloud video services. Our executive team includes visionaries who help shape some of SV's most successful companies. Consumers are streaming video anywhere and everywhere, cutting the cord on TV and cable. This is rapidly transforming media and contributing to high costs of encoding, storing, and delivering media files over the internet. Entrenched cloud providers control the market. Centralized and expensive, they create vendor lock-in and inhibit innovation. Content publishers have no way to recover the skyrocketing costs of these new services. The entire video industry is at an inflection point. The time is ripe for an innovative, low-cost alternative built on the blockchain to disrupt the status quo. Enter the VideoCoin Network. Powered by a decentralized video ecosystem, it transforms cloud video into an optimized algorithmically driven market. This allows us to deliver revolutionary price efficiencies, much like Airbnb and Uber. The VideoCoin network ushers in the new cloud by harnessing underutilized computing resources from around the world to revolutionize the video industry on the blockchain. Our network harmoniously integrates three key enhancements to ensure quality and consistency for media producers, ecosystem participants, and network resource operators. First, excessive token inflation has been a significant problem for many blockchain projects. We address this issue by eliminating ongoing token generation, adding stability, and further decentralizing the platform. Second, the network will enable fiat payments via a third-party fiat payment processor. Content publishers pay in fiat. Workers get paid in fiat. Our groundbreaking payment mechanism will reduce friction and encourage adoption, simplifying everything. Third, the video coin token, called VID, will have advanced functionality as a reputational staking token. Workers will be selected based on three factors, quoted price, number of staked tokens, and performance. This drives the least expensive and highest quality resources to be selected for work. The best rise to the top. Upon completion of verified work, the system's networking protocol will disperse to workers both fiat payments and additional VID tokens, which further builds their reputation. In addition, workers may participate in third-party staking services to enhance their reputational token stake. This competitive, reward-based token staking model generates value and rewards for workers and participants alike. All of this adds up to a revolutionary blockchain infrastructure for next-generation video services, tapping global network compute power to deliver dramatic cost reductions, reduce friction, encourage adoption, and spark innovation. The VideoCoin network brings the sharing economy to video services, helping create the future of cloud-based internet media. Join the video coin revolution at videocoin.io.
Great, so at this moment, we'll be taking questions from the chat. The first question on the chat is, um, Halsey, who do you see being the first consumers to adopt video coin this year? Well, I think what's going to happen is we will um, we will almost certainly have uh, many of the larger media companies uh, in our our beta program when it starts. There's you know for them they're um, they're all obviously incredibly keen to uh, to find uh, lower cost alternatives and and to not put money in, in Amazon's pocket. So, you know, sometimes you start businesses and, you know, you got to kind of convince people that they don't want to do what they're currently doing. We don't need to do that. They already don't want to do what they, they're, they're, uh, uh, they, 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 they do not want to continue uh, putting money in, in Amazon and, and Google's pocket. I mean, I, I can't state that enough. They really, really don't want to, uh, give Amazon any more uh, money to come at and co compete with them. A lot of these companies, their entire, their, their, um, their entire future is really dependent upon whether they can build streaming services now. I mean, the, you know, the, this hundred million um, user service that, that Disney uh, has promised, it's, it's a big part of, of how Wall Street will view them. And, you know, Time Warner and, and AT&T, really the same thing. I mean, this is a, uh, you know, for a lot of these companies, it's sort of do or die, um, and and that's the way, and that's the way they've sold it to these acquisitions to their shareholders. Um, so, so there is, there will be no shortage of companies who will uh, start out and test us, and 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 see whether you know we can we can deliver on our promises. Um, so I do, I don't think getting the I don't think getting the first set of customers to come in and, and start uh, testing on, on our infrastructure is really the problem. What we have to do is we have to make sure that we do a good job building what we build and we've got to make sure we don't have a promise. Um, and we have to make sure that any of the services that we start out that we provide, that they are, are, are equal to, to um, uh, um, and Amazon services in terms of, of overall quality, which we, we see no reason why we can't do that. Um, and and um, so so I, I don't think the first group of customers is they're they're also motivated to 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 go a different direction. It really going to boil down to honestly, uh, you know, our ability to 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 execute. Um, and and I'm, and I'm much happier to be in a position where you can live or die by how well you do. Then you know having to go out and talk to companies who are really happy with the way they're doing things and try to convince them that even though they're happy uh, doing it one way, they'll be even happier you know to to, to use us. Um, no, they're not happy, and um, and so you know we fully expect um, you know we have uh, a lot of conversations going on with. Uh, with large media companies, and and we uh, we, we fully ex uh, expect to have um, a, a lot of them who will participate uh, in our beta program, and um, you know it'll really be up to us to to perform. And Great. you know, like I said, that I, that's that for me is um, that's the ideal position to be in. And you know, I have to thank Amazon for for creating this opportunity. The, the, Jeff Bezos used to always say that. Um, their margin is my opportunity. And because Amazon always lost money, they never had any margin that people could go after. And now you have Amazon Web Services, which is worth like five, six, the value of the company. It's all their profitability. And so you actually have a legitimate business that makes as very large margins um, that, uh, that that you can attack. It's not true of any other area of, of, of Amazon. So in this particular case, Amazon's margin is really our opportunity. Great. Next question is, uh, what does tokenized fiat mean? Is it a third party token or another tokenized fiat created by VideoCoin? Um, no, we're working with a company that is um, working with a consortium of 200 banks. And so what happens is it's actually pretty, pretty straightforward. So what happens is that the, uh, the, the money comes, um, 
it, it from the standpoint of the customer, it looks exactly like how they would uh, operate with uh, with Amazon. Um, they they uh, we get we get paid by um, our customer. That money goes into uh, a bank, um, and that that fu those funds are are then uh, tokens are then created, uh, and those tokens are then sent to wallets for the data centers and for those who stake, and then those tokens then can be redeemed, um, and the money can be sent um, can be sent uh, through using the banking system uh, directly to to those who have received the, the token. So it's it's a it, it's from a regulatory standpoint, it's great because it's a it's a closed system. Um, so that it's you know um, and and from from a customer standpoint, they don't see anything other than the fact that they're paying us money and it's going and sitting in a, in a bank. But the tokenization of all of the money sitting in these banks uh, allows for um, a whole whole bunch of things, but but it it really brings all of the benefit of crypto um, to 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 fiat, and also allows for in this particular case people to create business processes um, around around fiat. But the simplest way to think about it really is just money goes into a bank. Those banks are uh, um, are part of a system. Where that value gets turned into tokens, kind of like uh, uh, kind of like stable coins, um, and then those are sent to the participants in the network. The the stakers will have a wallet. The data centers will have a wallet, and then um, at any point they can take the the tokenized fiat, and they can um, and they can go and redeem it and have it sent. Uh, they can connect their bank account. And have it sent into their into their bank. It's 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 pretty straightforward in terms of how it uh, how it works, uh, but it does take advantage of blockchain um, and uh, and fiat to create a, a, a new kind of payment infrastructure that works for crypto uh, decentralized crypto projects. Great. Another question from the chat: uh, How will video coins two hundred and fifty million token? supply be able to challenge cloud giants like AWS? Yeah, so I mean, I, I, I actually was in business with, with um, uh, Jeff Bezos back in 1990. I've always said he's the smartest guy that, you know, that I know. Um, obviously, Amazon is a huge juggernaut. It's been incredibly successful. But we're, you know, Airbnb, you know, doesn't uh, really compete with with Hyatt. They're very different business models, um, and and so you know we're more of a software company, and they obviously are running, uh, uh, buying, and 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 running infrastructure. I don't see I don't see Amazon changing their centralized model because it's so profitable, and I don't see why they would ever go to our business model where the margins are going to be thinner. So it's highly unusual when, when companies have a really profitable business and they try to blow it up themselves. So, so the first thing is we're really not like Amazon Web Services in a lot of ways. Um, we're not r running and managing data centers and all this the stuff that they do. Um, the other thing is that is that Amazon is um, and 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 then Amazon obviously has this highly profitable business which Wall Street pays attention to. So I just I just don't see him uh, or the company blowing up their their model. Now the what everybody needs to keep in mind is that, is that this industry is growing at twenty five percent per year. So even if we were just to pick up. Uh, some of the growth, we could still end up with an extraordinarily large business. So, so we don't have to have a winner-take-all attitude here. There is uh, there is massive amounts of business to be had, and we have a model which has already been proven in other domains. It's already it's already been proven with houses. It's been proven with cars, and there's no reason to believe that it can't work with data centers. In fact, there are a lot of reasons to believe it can work with data centers actually far more easily 
uh, than, than these other services, which have human interaction as kind of core part of their, their core business model. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't ever want to, you know, say that, uh, that, that, you know, I mean, Amazon is an amazing competitor. Everybody knows that. I'm, um, uh, I have, have nothing but respect for everything that they do. Uh, but we're, we're a different business model and I don't see them blowing up their margins, um, anytime soon. And, and like I said, we, it isn't a, a total zero sum game. There's so much growth in the industry that just picking off some of the growth, uh, would allow us to build a, a very, very large, uh, enterprise. Great. And the last question I have is, uh, what are the biggest challenges for video coin this year? Yeah, I mean, it's it's really, I mean, everything, every, the whole market is coming our way. I mean, you couldn't have a better environment for for creating a business that's going to deliver lower cost uh, video encoding, storage, and distribution. I mean, just everything that's happening around the world is is sort of feeding into uh, demand for our, our product. You know, I always, it's really, it, it, it comes down really to product development, it comes down to you know, whether we can build a uh, high quality um, uh, service that, that, that companies large and small can trust. And, and again, I'm, 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 um, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's a set of challenges that that's, that's a set of challenges I would want to have. Um, you know, as I said, trying to convince people to do something when they're already happy is very difficult. Um, our, our, uh, challenge is to make sure that we can build um, something that's it's it's not a trivial develop it's not a tr trivial development effort, um, but but we have resources and and a CTO who's one of the few people who's actually built one of these before. So so that is that's a huge benefit that we're not stepping into a domain where that we've never where we have no experience building a video streaming cloud. Deva built uh, Intel's video streaming cloud, managed the data center, and then ultimately it was sold to um, ultimately it was sold to uh, Facebook. And many people remember when when video started showing up in Facebook, and that was really based on the the acquisition of the video streaming cloud that Deva built at Intel. So we've got we've got great developers, we have great experience, we have a lot of uh, people who have who have uh, built successful businesses before. Um, we have a unique market that's exploding um, and it's really up to us to, to make sure that we, we, um, we don't overpromise uh, and under deliver um, and that we could build a, um, you know, a service that these, uh, that these companies can trust. You know, I think they'll all start out testing us. Nobody's going to jump in with, uh, with with both feet. One thing that we're doing, which is really unique uh, among projects, is we have something called Relay Miners. Relay Miners actually allow you to integrate your AWS um, your AWS infrastructure. So we don't require people to, to move over. They can just connect their AWS account to... to um, uh, to the video coin network and um, and so that's going to make it much much easier uh, for us to transition people um, as these companies develop um, um, they they um, develop they they have faith in our ability to um, to to deliver their key services that that bridge to the past into the future is a really important thing I think that we uh, that we architected um, it's actually in, in the white paper um, it's a it's a great way for us to to transition these 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 customers um, so so yeah I mean it really it's the basic stuff of you know building or building a legitimate project product that can meet the the demands of of, of these uh, media companies large and small Great. Um, we'll wrap this up. It's been a lot of great context for, for our viewers to consume. Uh, but I want to thank you, Halsey, for being on. I know the community thanks you for addressing these updates and providing some context and answers in this webinar. I'd like to invite viewers to follow VideoCoin on social media. We're on all the social platforms um, and join our community. Uh, and 
ask, ask more questions. We'll be having more webinars to come. Uh, join us on Telegram and Discord as well. Once again, uh, thank you, Halsey. Uh, the, thank you, and, and to everyone, it's it's a lot of really exciting things going on, and um, and thanks for participating today in the webcast.